Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. Several shocking cases of police brutality have over the last year uh, catapulted the issue uh, to headlines in the U.S., including Baltimore most recently. But it's not only in the U.S. Last week, a video emerged showing a policeman and a police volunteer using violence against a soldier of Ethiopian origin in Israel. The video ignited mass demonstrations last week in Jerusalem and just right now here in Tel Aviv. And like we're saying while we're speaking, uh, demonstrations continue. Today, we ask is Israel society racist against its own minorities? And if yes, what could be done to fight this phenomenon? With me uh, uh, right now here in the studio is uh, Fentahun Asefa Dawit. Good evening. Thank Good you evening. very much uh, for coming. You're executive di director of Tebeka, Tebeka Advocacy and Justice for Ethiopian Israelis, and also professor of political science, uh, Dr. Hani Zubeda. Good evening. Good Thank evening, you very Mr. much for coming. Thank you for um, having us. I, I want to start with you, Mr. Asif Dawit, and, and, you know, it's about time, and I will say it out loud, it's about time that the Ethiopian Jewish Israeli community will go out in the, on the streets and start demonstrating about the racism that they are feeling for years and years and years now. Yes, indeed. Um, racism and discrimination is um, have turned to be a day-to-day uh, experience here here in Israel uh, for the uh, minority groups in general and Ethiopian uh, Israelis in particular. Um, actually, uh, we've had a few big uh, uh, protests and demonstrations in the past. Um, in the 90s, in 1996, there was a protest about um, uh, the blood, blood chapter where uh, blood donations from the Ethiopian community were spilled out without the knowledge uh, um, as to what's been used for. Um, and now, after a long time of, of, of uh, uh, police violence against Ethiopian Israelis, um, the um, people, youngsters, have gone through this traumatic experience. Um, it is actually a situation where youngsters of the Ethiopian community are afraid of the police mm -hmm. and instead of uh, uh, you know being After they are serving in the army and serving yes, in the police yes, and serving yes, um, yes indeed yes indeed I, you know I, we'll just uh, uh, continue of course um, we want to this um, we'll continue this discussion and honey I want to ask you um, you know what I want to ask you Yes, of course I know. Well, it, it is about time, and I think the Ethiopians are lucky within the Israeli society, with all due respect, and, and their situation is dire, because they're Jews. Because if they were Arabs, and if this was October 2000, uh, we would have seen people being shot to death, which is exactly what happened in October 2000 in Wadi Ara, uh, right off... Uh, After um, the um, Second Intifada. Yes, when the, the Israeli Arabs... Citizens, citizens of the state of Israel, it should be said, legal equal citizens of the state of Israel, went to the streets to protest. In each and every country, each and every person has the right to protest. Now, when, when we look at what happened about four days ago with the Ethiopian soldier, with the young Israeli Ethiopian soldier, um, the heartbreaking about the situation is not yeah, the fact that the he was... We're seeing the live uh, yeah, footage uh, uh, coming yeah. uh, from Robin uh, Square uh, right now in Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. It's amazing to see this. And yes, you know good. what? Something, uh, something of not... Something is... Um, how can I put it? It's, uh, it's disappointing me that not all the minority groups actually mm. going out to demonstrate with I, them, that the Arab community is, is not there to demonstrate with them, that other minority Mizrahi, groups in Mizrahi Israel, Mizrahi the Mizrahi Jews, Mizrahi Jews are not going out and demonstrating out against them. Today. Because this is the cry of all yes, minority groups yes. and discrimination of Israeli society. And this society. is the success of the Israeli institutions because they're managing to separate between the non minority groups because this is not a minority because if you include the Arabs and if you include the Mizrahim and if you include the Ethiopian You're Jews this anymore. is the minority of the state of Israel and if they will act all together as one they will be able to change the entire mentality of the Israeli society it is not 
reasonable in 2015, and it is not moral in 2015 to discriminate someone just because he or she are black or he or she are Arabs. Especially in the Jewish country. Of course. Yes, yes. Well, as we say, Israel should be um, the light unto the nations. And this an is... An example to all the world. Yes, an example to the whole world when it comes to treating different people of different races. And you know what? It is on the, you know, the basic um, Israeli law, and that is, um, you know, uh, the humanitarian um, uh, protecting uh, uh, a human, human, human lives and, and the rights of the, 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 the different people, whatever their origin, uh, whatever their religion, whatever where they come from. And um, what is different today's uh, protest um, in Tel Aviv compared to what we had last week in Jerusalem, today I would say there was a very big uh, chunk of the protesters were not of Ethiopian origin yes, there was a mixed there was a mixed protest which is very uh, you know what um, heart feeling um, uh, you know heartwarming I should say uh, because to see um, people coming and um, identifying with the cause that you're fighting against and um, you know what the most disturbing thing with this uh, situation we know, I know, as Tebeka, because we deal with a lot of calls from the community calling us and telling us and uh, uh, complaining about this uh, uh, police violence against them. Uh, we um, uh, file uh, cases uh, for Mahash for there, you know, to check, and the cases will be closed without even investigating it. And um, this time it was different because of the footage, the fortunate footage. As hard, as hard, as disturbing as it was, the beating of that IDF soldier of Ethiopian origin of by course. the policemen, as tough as it is, you know what? Something came out of it. This footage actually exposed what uh, the police can do. But when I say this, um, this is, you know, I'm, I'm saying when I say this, I should, I, I think we should, we should, we should, we should understand. The, the whole context of it. I'm not saying, you know, the whole police officers are, are, are racist. The whole police officers want is, to want to discriminate against. But can against. you say that the Israeli society yeah. is not racist? Uh, yeah, you know I, what, I, if I do say the Israeli people are racist, I'm including you, I'm including him, I'm including everybody. Everyone. That could be, that could I be, agree. this is, this is not, you know, not everyone is a racist. So there are racist. There are racist people I, within it, Israel, and there is a lot of ignorant people in Israel. The ignorance that is in Israel, I don't want to know who you are. I don't want to understand your culture. I don't want to understand your language because you're different. For as long as you're different, I don't care, and I don't want you near me. By the time I get to know you, I can't understand you, I can't connect with you, and then we can do some things together. You there know, is a big ignorance in this country. I, I, I want to take this uh, to somewhere, someplace else, because unlike the Russians and unlike the Arabs, the Ethiopians decided not to go like and, and create uh, a party to present them in the government. Well, the Ethiopians try to uh, integrate in the Israeli society. They are going and working in all the places and they're going to universities and they are applying for high rank jobs and they are actually trying to be unlike maybe the Russian community that came and found itself like outside uh, as an outsider, the Arab community that is, that is an outsider. Uh, the other like um, not talking about you know the infiltrators or the the refugees but the Ethiopian community did its best to be part of the Israeli society and yet again the Israeli society actually not willing to accept the Ethiopians inside the mainstream Israelis. Well, there's a major problem. First, let me begin with this. It's not that we can talk about individuals that are good and society that is bad. Society socializes individuals to be bad. And in Israeli society, we are socialized to be racists, period. I see them in the university day in, day out. Most of them are being socialized into built-in racism into the system, Arabs blacks and so on and so forth one two the ethiopian community as a group is extremely small 
We're talking about 120, 125,000. They do not have the masses of the former Soviet Union immigration group, yeah. and they do not have other masses, which is a problem. Three, you've touched on a major point. Within Israel, in the last 20 years, there's a huge community that came from other countries, mostly Eritrea and South Sudan, which are the asylum seekers and the refugees. And this group, because of what the state has done to them and with them, its unwillingness to either recognize the refugee status or test it, have caused a major problem for the Ethiopians because right now within South Tel Aviv, people are looking at their neighborhoods, which they're losing ground to black people. Now, a society that has a built-in racism into it and sees other Jews fighting over their homes with Eritreans and Sudanese, it is a mixture that we cannot contain. Now, there's one major point to that to be said. We cannot remove any kind of blame from the police. Let us not talk about the high-ranked officers within the police. They are misogynistic. They have raped women in the police force, period. And the, and the, and the distance between raping women in the police and beating to a pulp uh, a youngster, a black youngster, is not that far. And the police needs to have some kind of reformulation to the way it thinks. And this is a must in the Israeli state. What, what took you so long? <laughs> Look, I as an organization, we deal with it day in, day out. We alert about it. We send warnings. The sign was on the wall. It's just a matter of time that would, this would happen. And, you know, Tabaka deals with, you know, uh, discrimination and racism uh, within the Ethiopian f uh, community uh, from different um, uh, governmental offices, uh, public uh, places, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing we really handled most is police violence maybe, against the Ethiopian community. Maybe you were too nice. Too it nice, could be. too it nice could be. with the Israeli society, could, too uh, look, uh, forgiving for the Israeli society and for the police forces and for the government. Too nice. You said, okay, we have a country. We came from a, uh, a third uh, the, world, uh, 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 you know, land. But uh, the we, amazing community but, of the Ethiopian Jews for the over three and a half decades has not been able to break down the institutionalized ghettoizing of the people in Israel. Over three and a half decades, if you are looking for the Ethiopian community, we can count five locations that we can find concentrations of Ethiopians and schools that are mutually exclusive Ethiopians and complete discrimination in military units, um, a very low achievements in the labor market. I you think, know, look, I think that's changing. I think, I think we see it's a very gradual, a very slow change, but gradually that's changing. It's not to the extent, it's not to the pace that we wanted the change to come. But there is a movement, there is um, in the right direction. Having said that, we have to make it clear here. It doesn't matter whether there are 10 cases or 100 cases, 1,000 cases, or one, even one case. There should not be racism. There should not be beatings of soldier, yeah, you know, uh, police officers I, against anyone whether he is a soldier, whether he is uh, a woman, whether he is a child, whether he is an old man. I want, this is, I agree this is with not, you. This is not what we... What, yeah. 300 percent, 300 percent. But there is another phenomenon that is happening, uh, honey, and you try to explain to me why the minority uh, groups that are being treated in such a racist way become so racist, yeah. yes, the become oppressors. so racist towards other people. If it's the Arabs, if it's Ethiopian towards Arabs, if it's Arabs uh, Mizrahi, towards Jews, Mizrahi, if it's Mizrahi Jews, towards Arabs, they are becoming more racist than what be, and they're forgetting that they are being treated in a racist because way. Because that's, that's the thread that is going through all these cases all over the world. You get a new group which comes into your society and you are as is disenfranchised and oppressed, the easiest step for the hegemonic elite to throw away 
these two groups at the throats of each other is take one group and lash it at the other. And this is what we see. When we looked at Kiryat Malachi, a small township in the south, who are the people who said, we will not rent apartments to Ethiopian Jews? Mizrahi Jews. What was their rationale? Their rationale was, we will not rent out apartments for you, amazing people, because we think the value of our apartments will come down. This is all education and hegemonic elite which riots one at the other, and this needs to be stopped. I was very happy to, today to see a lot of protesters that came from Mizrahi Jews and, and came from organizations. Yeah, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. There, are, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of police officers, and they're um, surrounding the, the, the uh, protesters, and there's a huge mayhem over yes. there. First of all, you know, I think that this is the time for the Israeli society to wake up, actually wake up from the racism that it got into. It's just I, unbelievable to see these images. Unfortunately, I don't have more time, but I, gentlemen, thank you. Just to say that finally, I agree with you. This is a wake up call and we do need to work together with the governments. Yes. I think all we the government officers, yeah. including the we prime minister, should do Two something. Two minutes and we will be back. Thank you very much.